carry on. Uh, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hi, Nola Fam, and welcome to another episode of Novak Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Marko Milenkovic, and joining me, as he does always, is my good friend, Mario Bocardi. Mario, welcome, buddy, again, and, and how are you? Thank you. Um, yeah, I have, I'm happy because I'm I'm always happy to be to be here talking to you and you know especially today because we we have a special guest and I'm uh, honestly I cannot wait to to talk and interact with her. Uh, so I'm really really happy to be here. Yeah, you're right. As you said, she is a very special guest. Somebody I want who I wanted to talk to you for months now, and we finally have a chance to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Andrea Prisakariu. Andrea, welcome, dear, and thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Hello, everybody, and welcome here with us today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so tell me, dear, how are you, first of all? I am good. Thanks for asking. Um, I've been a bit sick these past few weeks, so I can say now I'm, I'm a bit better. Um, but in general, I can say I'm fine. Okay, it's 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 good to hear that. Honestly, after you know, if if I remember correctly, when was it uh, last week or this week when you put out a a Twitter oh. thread about you know explaining how you've been dealing with some mental struggles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was after this tournament that happened in Bucharest. Um, I think it's Tiriak Tiri Foundation Open. That's the the name of the tournament, yeah. if I'm correct. I, I played qualis. Um, I lost in the second round, but I was also lucky to get in because um, I, I didn't have a wild card or anything. So I just went for it by luck, uh, even if it was here in Bucharest. Um, you know, Romanian Federation gives the wild card the way they seem fit. So yeah. um, I was super glad that I got to play the wild card that they gave, you know, in the first round. That was uh, I, I wanted that to happen, you know. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it, is is everything is everything uh, fine now? Yeah, I mean, or, or better at least. I mean, uh, now yes. I mean, it's it's a it's a process. You know what I mean? I um I literally enjoy the process because the life of every athlete, I think, it's like this. You know, sometimes so we need to just keep the focus on the positive sides, and even in the moments when there are negativities around us and. I, I just think you need to find the light somehow or at least to know people that could guide you through the beautiful side of life, you know, because we are much more than tennis players. That's what I came to an understanding. Yeah. Can you uh, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And before we, you know, talk about, you know, your career, life, Novak, whatever. Can you elaborate a little bit more how you. Uh, does the life of an athlete in 2023 actually looks like? Because I think that people are, uh, as you said, uh, more and more forgetting that athletes are, you know, actual people, you know, have, you know, feelings and troubles and problems and whatever. So can you, can you give us, you know, your thoughts on athletes in the year 2023? I think that um, even uh, I, I saw a tweet um, from a, uh, Australian girl, I believe, a tennis player, Destiny Ayeva, or how's yeah. that pronunciation? I don't know. She's She was a friend of mine when we were juniors, so we knew each other pretty well when we were 14. Um, I actually saw myself in her tweet because people don't realize that um, they're not, there's no money here in the IPF level, you know? I mean, even though I'm going, let's say, for 25K and win it, they put the prices so up for the hotels they choose to be the official that I'm literally left with nothing. So I pay the flights, I pay the hotel, I pay my coach. And then when I get back, I also pay from my parents' savings to end up paying everything there, even if I win the tournament. So for us, it's really not about money. And then I saw a comment, you know, that pissed me off. It was something like, okay, then play better. How, how does that make sense with what I with what our problems are? It's not about play better. It's a super strong level. And the ITF, it's much stronger than the WTA, as Jessica Pegola said, and I totally agree with her. 
you know, I might not be there, up there, but our level is also super tough because all the girls that come to compete in ITF, they come there to win, not to feel the joy, to feel the city, to whatever. No, they come to win and to eat you alive, you know? They don't care. They care about the points. So my life, I, I'm talking about my personal life, is of that course. if I, I wouldn't have my parents, I would be in total shit right now. That's for sure. Because they pay for everything, you know? And also as a Romanian, um, the sponsors don't view, view me so good in a positive way. I don't know if it's because of the country. It might be, but I Probably truly not. hope it's not. But I think it is in some situations. But, but there's no, I don't know, they don't give me the chance to, um, I don't know. They expect us to what? To be first top 100 and then we need sponsor. No, it's not quite like that because the sponsors I saw that only come in your life as an athlete only when you do good. But what about the process until I'm going to be good, you know? I also need help from the lower parts because when I'll be up there, I will not care. I'll have my own brand and I'll say, no, thank you, fuck off, you know? Yeah. It will be like that. So yeah, that's maybe it's that, you know, maybe it's that when you were talking about Uh, the difference between the ITF and the WTA tour is that probably, you know, um, some, some people on the WTA can, can feel, uh, I don't want to say that, but can feel just sometimes a little bit relaxed because, you know, uh, they have made that jump uh, and so things are starting to looking a bit better because they, they are, for example, in the main draw of the Grand Slams, which are, you know, Uh, uh quite good <laughs> good money and um, probably in the ITF it's more of um you know a, a jungle in terms of uh of the fight to get out from there and try yeah. to do whatever it takes to to get out from there and try to uh, to reach that level because if you reach that level then the money starts to come and you have to worry just a little bit less That's true. I mean, imagine you go to a Grand Slam. Yeah, you, you, you're playing qualies. Let's not say main draw. You play mm -hmm. qualies. And you literally just go there to sign and you receive what? You receive a lot of money, you know, just because you're there. Yeah, so, you know, because I've, uh, I've met, uh, I, I, I know about some players which were quite injured, but they still, still went there uh, to play that first round, even if, Uh, not ready physically, not physically ready to play, but because they needed to to earn that uh, those money uh, in order to you know be be calmer with herself and with their team. Uh, sure. And you know, it's it's not fair from that point of view that if you're not ready to compete at 100%, percent, probably. Uh, you know, from an ethic point of view, you should let someone else to play. But from another aspect, it's also fair because you earned that place. And if you need those money, you earn that because you had good results in the previous months that led you to, to reach that Grand Slam quality. Uh, and so I can also understand why you go there, even if, you know, in that period you have some knee issues or whatever. And you, even if you're not ready to compete 100% of your level. That's, yeah, that's I mean, sure. I mean, just, just check, check the prize money for, you know, uh, last week's US Open. I mean, the, uh, the participants in the first round of qualifying, all of them received $22,000. I mean, who, who managed to enter the main draw, uh, uh, the price for just being in round one is $81.5,000. Yeah. Uh, So that's that's a lot of money uh, for for you know lower ranked players. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And not so many athletes that are out at the top think about us, you know. So one of them is obviously Novak. That also helps his Serbian uh, other players to to become great. And I think that's why I respect him so much more because I never seen um, any athlete to do that. You know, like. The, the way he does it not even in uh, my country and i also had great players that yeah. were there yeah i wanted to ask you 
I, I wanted to ask you that. Sure, we'll talk about you know Novak in in more details later on. But I wanted to ask you, uh, how is the you know overall tennis situation in in Romania currently? I mean, the country did have you know a lot of success you know in the past. I mean, even even in the 21st century, especially in women's tennis, with you know Simona Halep and Sorana Kirstea and others. But how is it, how, how is the situation in regards to you know uh, supporting the up and coming players and you know basically you know money wise potential wise? Um, depends who's more lucky to know many people, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, exactly. <laughs> because I also saw good talents that went to waste because they weren't helped. But also some other talents having wild cards and stuff like that that um, didn't honor them, you know, just because their coach was important in the federation. So that I see super often. And uh, then there are those people that uh, are coming straight to my face and tell me I'm old to receive help because they somehow expect us to be all Coco Gauff and Emara Ducano or Mira Andreeva right now because they think that's the normality, you know, like at 15, 16 to be, I don't know, there already in the WTA events, which is not true, you know, because everybody has their own path. And a good example is, um, I don't know, Buzarnescu, because we are speaking mm. about, I mean, Buzarnescu did it after 30, right? Who would have thought that she could manage that to be there in top 40 at, after 30, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. The situation is kind of bad because there are many people that are toxic and they don't deserve to be in charge. But, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying not to get into all that personally. Okay. Because, for sure, I would lose my mind trying to understand theirs. So for me, it comes super easy about decisions, you know? If somebody comes and try to give me their opinion when I know they are not even um, smart enough to have an opinion about me, I don't want to listen, you know? I don't care who they are. They can be, I don't know, the president. It doesn't matter to me. No, I, I completely agree with But was it was yeah, it so. always like that uh, yeah well let me ask her this marius and then mm -hmm. you, you proceed was it always like that i mean the situation in regards to you know helping and supporting the young players or is it something recent no i think uh, there are uh, moments you know depends who who's the favorite one or uh, the favorites one in plural because when my generation was uh, in junior days, we took the Mondial Bros, which no team ever did that for their country. And we went to every European, we were almost the same three girls every damn time, you know. Um, but we didn't get enough credit for that, I think. And now when some other girls are doing Europeans, which is also normal to be there because you need to play for your country sometimes. It's like, oh my God, what they're doing, it's amazing, wow, you know? And I feel a bit bad because when I'm going back in time, they, it wasn't that for us, you know? Or I see them with uh, clothing sponsors that we didn't get the chance to have or receiving some free courts at the Federation that we didn't have the chance, you know? S stuff like that. There was also moments for us when we had the free court or some balls that we were receiving to practice. But then again, I also remember the day when, um, I, I don't know, I was 19 probably, where not even the federation called me to tell me in person, but the girl from the reception called me and when I wanted to put to practice, she told me I don't have a court anymore there. And I said, oh, okay, so why? because I'm not, I'm not doing the principles anymore that they are looking for. I was not having the level. It's okay, great, it's fine. And then I'm trying to play for my own club, which was Dinamo at some point, right? 
Dinamo Bucharest, which is also an important club for football, for handball, yeah. everything. There was no room there for me as well. I never had practice when I wanted to, never received the money. There was 300 delays per month, which I don't even know how much that is in Europe, but just 300 delays. And I didn't receive them in over two years because it was war in Ukraine. You know what I mean? These kind of excuses were everywhere. So then you switch the club, you switch, you switch everything, and you try a new life. But then again, then there's the question, oh, but why didn't you post the, the girls or the guys from Romania? Like, come on, Romania, be supportive. Like, let's be clear, I'm proud of my country, but I'm proud of the history we have. I'm not proud of this country that's right now. So why should I bother? Yeah, I can, I can kind of understand that. Yeah. Mario, yeah. What, what did you want to ask? Yeah, no, I, uh, I totally understand this, uh, these last things that, that were said. And I wanted then to ask you how, how much passion does it take? Because it's, it's not an easy situation. And so I, I perceive that, uh, you know, you, you gotta love, incredibly uh, tennis this sport and and training hard and be you know be fit enough to to be able to play at your highest level uh, and also a passion for the game for playing matches and it, it's great it's great because you you know we we know stories of players who got to be really really famous and they didn't really like the sport and uh, and all this stuff, but I think that for you, it, it should be really important to to love the sport, uh, to to be able to keep going and to to find motivation. That's that's for sure an important asset. I mean, if you put me to choose, if I want to play with pleasure and be top one hundred, and that's the best I can do, let's say, and be number one in the world but having crisis over crisis and panic attacks and everything, I would easily choose to be top 100 and that's it. I, I, know, I don't need to beat any goals or to be the best ever that ever existed because I think that's superficial to say to be. Because if you, if you stop any interview and you ask them, like, what do you want to be in tennis? Everybody's, I want to be world number one. Okay, I'm tired of this answer. What else? What What do you want to do with the money that you win in tennis? Why do you do it, you know? What's your reason behind it? What's your why, you know? My why is easy. I, I want to make a future for the kids that will follow in my footsteps, right? Because if you look in Romania, we have like, what, 10 academies for tennis, but there are no coaches. It's It's a joke. This is this is not academy. They just pretend it's academy for publicity. There's no there's no, no one to take care of the kids. Uh, there's no one to train there. They are just little kids that are working with some coaches that weren't even tennis players in the first place. Because now everybody chooses this uh, job, even if they don't know anything about the sport. You know, it's like hmm. What should I do to win money today? Let's become a personal trainer or a tennis job situation. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You cannot be a personal trainer if you don't know anything about sport. As you can also not be a nutritionist if, if you don't have the specific classes to understand what nutrition is about. You know how many fake people I met in, during my career? So many. I can so only many. imagine. Yeah. For sure. But how did it become so bad? Because you know we touched on the uh, on the the you know heritage and past of tennis in in Romania and uh, what about you know Ian Tiriak? I mean he's a rich guy, you know he's into tennis. How is he? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking you. <laughs> you know, why is he not supporting the you know the sport in in the country in his country? Well, if you look. You, if you're looking from the outside, he's supporting, no? He did some tournaments and, uh, yeah, it's good for the eye. But um, I don't know if he knows the names of the players. I don't know. That's that's a question I don't know. 
uh, what I know also for sure for myself, I know I'm not liked. I don't know why. Maybe because of the tattoos or maybe because of my makeup on court or maybe I don't know. You're this... talking about the media or? Everybody, you know, it's not like just the media. It's about the Romania itself. You know, the people here and the Federation as well. So I don't know. It really depends. Some people were helped. Some weren't helped. It's like depends how how you are seen. This is what what I'm trying to to tell you guys because it's super important the appearances. This is the world we are living in. It's super important the appearances, unfortunately. And there's that nobody cares about the soul, nobody cares about the passion. It depends on what your name, your last name is, who are your parents, yes, and um, how much money you have. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say that uh, I admire a lot the fact that you, you know, would it have been easy to, to try to reject a little bit your personality, to try to be, to be helped a little bit more, but I, I found that you have been you know, brave enough to stay true to yourself and even accept the risk of um, be not, you know, 100% of in organizer thought or something like that. And I find this really, that can be, you know, um, important for other people to know because I, I think that if you, if you choose to do this, to, to do this way, you you haven't regretted it i'm i i think uh, in this way i don't know if you agree with me but i'm really glad to see that you you stayed true to to yourself and you're here right now to to talk about this because it's it's really important to uh, to give a message even to 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 younger people to to all the the girls and the boys who are uh, playing tennis and they still want to become who they want to be Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, for sure, it's one of my choices that I couldn't, um, how to say, I don't know how to say in a nice way, but kissing asses, you know, this is the normal term that I've yeah. used. Because That's the I proper yeah, we, say, we, say, we say licking in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to say that right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's what, Sorry. <laughs> that's that's what's happening, you know? That's what many people do and I cannot do it. And uh, I don't know. That's why I don't even watch so much uh tennis in women because at the end of every match I see I I see the the same interviews, the same replies. Yeah. And I'm getting bored of it. Yeah, it's boring as hell. I thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I love you so much. This is my favorite city yeah. <laughs> that I've played in. And thank you to my mom. Thank you to my dad. Thank you to my team. Amazing people. Thank you to the organization. Oh, my God, girl, you played so much. Next time you'll beat me for sure. And yeah, we should put this on TikTok. About, <laughs> about players, no. like, for example, you know, I feel that I'm just taking a, an example of a player who can be, you know, sometimes um say things as as she feels like uh, i was thinking about yelena ostapenko for example or for sure. tabalenka um, it's another one yeah i think that these players get a bit of criticism sometimes to not being 100% nice as they say but sometimes i feel like you know if you feel this way you should you should say you should say for that's sure. what I... for sure for sure um, I mean, look, another good, another good example is Kyrgios, right? Yeah. I, I don't Maybe. agree with him all the time, but at least he's saying something that I didn't hear before, you know? It's not about me agreeing with him, but it's about him being real. So letting me see another side of whatever this is, you know, this tennis world, just to see another side of something, you know? Yeah, but why is why is tennis? I, I feel like tennis is the only sport that doesn't appreciate authenticity. I mean, Kyrgios is an authentic guy. Novak, of course, is is an authentic guy. 
And people seem to, especially in the Western world, to, I don't want to say despise them, but, you know, they like to drag them down as opposed to all the other sports. I mean, I wrote about it last last week and we, ha we had discussion about, you know, Kobe and Michael Jordan and their trash talking and that's applauded and celebrated. While when Novak does it or somebody in tennis does it, they're basically, you know, villainized. You know, you shouldn't be doing that. And, th and that, that, that is actually something that, you know, keeps your attention. That's something that fans want to see. They don't want to see, as you said, you know, all those, you know, boring conferences, the same answers. Uh, they want to see emotion. You know, they want to see authenticity. So what, what's your take on that? And do you think it's going to change in the future? I don't think it's going to change very soon because there are not so many people that <laughs> don't don't do that. don't do that to me. I agree. <laughs> I'm I'm just being realistic. I'm so sorry, but for example, um, I don't know. I saw a lot of criticism that Novak took after Ben Shelton celebration, which was everywhere. And all I can say is this: I don't know what Bill Sheldon was thinking when he did this celebration against TFO, which was a great guy. And also I understand they were friends. I'm not in TFO's shoes to know if that bothered him or not, but yeah. I'm allowed to have my opinion. I don't think that was cool. I don't think it was the place for that kind of celebration. They didn't have any beef to be in the middle to do that kind of celebration. And I don't think also Novak appreciated that. So... I think Novak took this opportunity uh, to express himself in his own unique way, you know, because everybody says that he was copying him. I don't think that's 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 copying what he did. No, he was mocking but him. It was a lesson. It was a lesson that was super important. So I understood that he didn't understand the lesson anyway. <laughs> so yeah, neither he, neither did his father. Because I lost, I lost it when I understood that he expressed about Novak this guy. Yeah, and he he can he, he can play I at the saw, highest he can play at the guy. highest level. I this saw guy. you. I but, saw what you wrote. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, when I saw that message, I think I've I've read it at least five times. This guy. Hmm. So that's yeah. okay. Cool. Even if you don't like the guy. You know, at least pronounce the names guy that beat you in three sets, you know, at least pronounce the name. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't need to say like the legend Novak Djokovic or the champion Novak Djokovic, but you, you just have name to say him, Novak yeah. Djokovic, you know? Yeah. So, well, yeah. Plus, was... plus, plus, yeah. He flat out, plus he flat out lied at his press conference, you know, when he said that he didn't see Novak celebration, which we all know that he did. I mean, we, we saw the stare. At, we, at the net, the you know, stare, we saw the handshake. Yeah. Like, come on. Now, to be honest, uh, I don't know if Andrea agrees with me, but I think that uh, it's not just that tennis fans mm, don't appreciate people who are, you know, authentic. I think that in tennis, there's a little bit of confusion about, um, you know, saying something during the match or, um, you know, staying true through a, a principle or something similar. And often tennis fans confuse this with disrespect and, uh, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct. And there's a little bit of, of confusion, in my opinion, between the two sides of, uh, of a certain behavior that sometimes can be still respectful towards for example, the opponent, but, uh, you know, mm, you are not afraid to complain about uh, an issue or something like that. And sometimes it gets confused to disrespecting the opponent, which in my opinion is another kind of thing. And right now we are a little bit confused about the the two aspects of, uh, of a certain behavior that a player can, can assume. Look, for example, a thing that I will never appreciate and it was done in my face in this uh, ITF level was when uh, she plays a net and she says, come on, this kind of thing. Really? Really? I don't care who she is. She will never hear a hello from me ever again. Because in that moment, you show that you have no character, you know, you can see it as a little thing 
but the little things matter. They super matter. And I really like respect on the field. But if I feel like I don't have it, it's no problem because I can also play dirty and I don't mind, you know? I don't yeah. mind at all. I actually mm. like it. No, me, <laughs> so, me too. Me too. I like, yeah. I, for example, I like the trash talking in, in NBA. Oh, that, sure. That's one of my favorite parts of, of, of the league, of the sport. Uh, oh, and sure. I and I can and I agree with Mario what he said, but I, I also think this is just my personal opinion. It's a matter of it's a question of you know generations. It's a, it's a generational thing. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that uh, TikTok video that uh, I can't remember his name, but he's an Australian guy. He went to Wimbledon and basically interviewed old generation and new generation, and you know to see how they feel about Novak, and literally. All the, the, you know, the young guns, the younger generations were, you know, we love Novak. Novak is the GOAT. He, you know, he stuck uh, to his principle and whatever. And all the oldies, so 50 plus, you know, it was only, only British crowd. But I also feel that that's the, the sentiment mm -hmm. in most of the Western countries. You know, they don't like him. They don't like him off the court. They don't, they don't like him as a person. How can, you like, how, can you, how can you like or not like somebody who you never met before? Yeah, talking honestly with you, uh, and then I, uh, I know, uh, I, I just expressed my opinion. I think that in this case, it's that, you know, human beings uh, sometimes are, um, are a lot addicted to who were the greatest when they were the age of, you know, young age. And then as time passes, they get, you know, a bit nostalgic and so they, they tend to dislike a little bit who comes, you know, later because they are still um, emotionally addicted to some other tennis legends or whatever. And so, for example, young people for the past 10, 12 years, 14 years have seen, you know, the Novak domination. And so they are... Uh, you know, the, a lot of them fell in love with Novak because he was he was winning and had, uh, you know, also being nice to always nice to the fans and to uh, to young people. They started to fall in love with him, and maybe people from the you know from the previous generation. Uh, it's difficult for them to, you know, get away from the love. They, they feel from some guys who were before uh, but, but to Mario, then appreciate what's new. I don't know. Yeah, but, and that's, yeah, but that's the feeling about that. But they're, they're kind of the same generation. I mean, Rafa and, not, not, and, and Novak are same generation. Rafa is a year older than him. I can get away uh, with Federer. I mean, he's six years older, but that's still kind of the same. It's not like we're talking, you know, football and my dad or my granddad, you know, thinks Pele or Maradona are the goats and, you know, you and me think that, you know, it's Messi and Ronaldo. It's not that big of a gap. It's a couple no, of Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But for example, uh, it's, for example, when I'm talking to, you know, for example, my, my father, uh, who is 60 uh, right now, uh, for example, he says that, you know, winning the Davis Cup is one of the greatest thing that can can happen in tennis to you and to your country and and he says all these things and for me it's like what i, I disagree with that because you know i've grown up in in an era in which you know winning uh, the personal career it's more important at least for you know i'm talking about italy and western country i don't know about the country you live but here Right now, even if newspaper can talk in in certain way, trust me that for a normal Italian people, Yannick Sinner winning a Grand Slam would be way way more important than Yannick Sinner helping Italian team to win Davis Cup. That's and sure. and it's totally different from what my dad, which is uh, who is th sixty, thinks about the matter. Because in the past, when he, he, he was following tennis, it was maybe a little bit different. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you, you know, uh, if I'm talking about things that are out of this world of you, you know, you can understand why no, I'm saying this. No, of course, I understand completely. Okay, let's not talk I about it. 
let's not talk about Italy, Davis Cup, uh, Serbia, and Western Western world. Let's no, I was just talk for example. It was just an example uh, to to explain how you know mm, human human uh, mind can think about some particular subjects and players and whatever. Let, let's uh, talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about Novak. So and yeah. uh, talk, uh, tell us about your Novak story. When did that be, you know become a thing? How? What? Why him? Why not the 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 other two guys? Uh, it was always him since I was a little child, um, and it was also him when he was number three in the world. You know, after the big guys, as they said in that time, only because he was having the elegance of Federer and the hard work of Nadal combined. So I think he had the both sides, you know. I like I like that. Uh, because Nadal was a hard worker and Federer was a pure talent. But Novak is everything. A so perfect player. I also uh, saw myself in that as a person because I, I never could be just one thing. So when I saw another human being that's successful and um you know f- free in uh, the way he speaks and the way he does things uh, i i said okay so this could be my role model for sure so that's how i became so close to to him um you know in my imagination when times were rough for me on court or even in real life you know i was listening to him uh the way he was speaking in interviews or the way uh he was playing to <coughs> matches so i think that connection just grew because i paid attention to every detail that he made because i wanted to to be on the right path you know also mentally and also in tennis life speaking have, but when, yeah, go on. when did you exactly started thinking that he, he, he would have been the greatest tennis player of no. all time? Do you remember any particular moment in which you started thinking about that? Yeah, um, he lost the final in uh, the fifth set against Federer, if I remember correctly. I cannot remember the year, I need to find it online. And it was super heartbreaking to see him cry and the way he was tearing up. It was, <laughs> oh my God. Um, but you know what? In that moment, I was like, okay, he will come back from this and he will beat all records. Just because of how you can see a person that's suffering for the, the job he likes to do, you know, for their passion. It's the answer of, what he realized in the whole sport and that that day for me in my head changed everything because i saw he i saw it in his eyes that he was ready to risk everything just to be the best ever you know and he did that and look look where he is now you know 24 and still can uh, what what is your first memory of him do you remember that uh i was seven um yeah this one was a nice memory so i was seven and um there was one of my first interviews let's say i was in my home country in yash and there was this guy with the microphone and was like what who's your favorite uh, player in the world and i said novak <laughs> and he said why because he's novak <laughs> that was the answer at that time you know because i didn't know what to say because he's novak that's why it's it's easy as that And wait, then, wait, I, I, I have I have to tweet that. <laughs> Andrea it, says a seven year old seven year old Andrea because yes, Novak. Why you like Novak? Just because he's Novak, duh. And <laughs> and then also because he's a Serb. I always liked Serbian people. Everybody knows that. I didn't. Yeah, like yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you that, that later, but yeah, go on. Yeah, because they're much nicer than my own. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I swear to God. No, by the way, I feel totally, I feel exactly the same, by the way. So I, I, I laugh at this. Yeah, I mean, we are brothers. Romania and Serbia are brothers. But uh, to be honest, 
about me i'm talking about me i have my um, like a fan base i don't even call them fans because they are like a virtual family of mine yeah they are 90 percent serbs so um i receive I... many messages that are from serbs instead of receiving messages from romania <laughs> that they say fuck off every day to me so <laughs> so you see my point and um also i don't know for a 23 year old girl me and my friends we always watch football so we are also liking the football team as you guys know but i don't like them just because they're handsome because we all know they're handsome but they're also men you know if that makes sense men because i'm looking in my country at the football players and <laughs> oh my god i cannot even describe but they Come don't on, look professional to me you know so when i see for example vanya vanya milinkovic savic like one of the best goalkeepers ever. I see him focused. I see him like an animal on court. And he's like, damn, this is this is the mentality that Serbia has, you know? So it's it's easy. Literally it's easy. I just have a, a feeling in my gut. Have have you ever have you ever been? Have you ever visited? Serbia. Belgrade, I mean. Yeah, I know I know you've been to I know you played I, tournament I this, never, this summer. I never time to visit anything in Serbia I just visited the courts where yeah I come on but no. yeah, you I, I get it I get this you but have I to come to Belgrade I said to myself I will come I don't care when but for sure I will come I will come even by myself if I have no one to come with me because my best friend lives in Switzerland but she's from Kosovo <laughs> She doesn't want to come with me. Oh, awkward. <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing with her a few days ago because I told her that I will do this podcast and I'll tell everyone that I love you even if even if we, if we are so apart from this. But no, she loves me and um, uh, she, I love her and she's my best friend ever and she's also a tennis player. So she cannot come with me, but. But I will come by myself. There's no problems about that. She she can come as well. We we like we 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 love everyone. We will let her slide, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but by the way, I'm I'm gonna go to to Bucharest for the first time ever in October, I think. Yeah. So I'll I'll be calling you to to you know give me some recommendations, what to see, where to for eat, sure. and, and and those kind of things. I still can't believe I've never. I still can't believe I've never been. I mean, I've been talking about going to. Uh, how do you pronounce uh, Temishwara in in, in Romanian? Yes. Temishwara, yeah, for, for years, literally, because it's like it, it's like a, a it's not even a, a three hour drive from Belgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah but ne but never happened. So this is final. This is finally happening. This is your so, time to go. For yeah, sure. and yours exactly. too, <laughs> and yours too. <laughs> my turn as well. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this: What is your what is your all-time favorite Novak victory? It's it's a bit difficult question. I mean, there are a lot of victories, first of all. <laughs> it's super tough. By the way, I have mine, and I never tell told you what my favorite win is. So after Andrea, probably I'll speak. Yeah, and, and shame on you for not doing that before. <laughs> oh my god. This is so tough. Let let me oh. check. I put you on the spot, huh? I want to say the exact year and the exact match. Yeah, okay. I I can I can answer me well. Yeah, uh, I feel. But, yeah. but it's not it, it, it's not the most important probably out of his whole career. And but you know it came in in one of the most difficult times uh, for me. Um, and it was the semi-final he won in the 2021 French Open. And for me, and for me, it's been it's been super super important as as a tennis fan. I'm talking as a, as a normal tennis fan uh, because I was really in a in a bad bad period, and so that uh, that win uh, feeling. Um, you know, was mixing with my personal feeling, and it was it was a really emotional one. 
uh, because of of a lot of personal stuff also uh, and i like to mix this these two side of myself because uh, sometimes i'm you know down bad and something good in tennis happens and you know it's not a resolution uh, for those personal uh, issues but it can really really help you if you are an addicted fan of of the game and so i i have that one particularly in my heart because um, it meant a lot for for me, considering where I was in that period. Yeah, I love that response, honestly. I think for me, it was also the first Australian Open he won after the ban. Uh, no, mm. so this year is, yeah. This year. Because to be banned from a country based on your principle you know not bend only but it's, basically you know dragged through you know everything you everyone and everything i don't know disappeared the chat in that moment <laughs> but uh, to do all that and to come back there and also to, to treat people with the same respect the the same ones that they kicked you out was for me amazing yeah th that was the moment i realized that novak is a better person than i am <laughs> because i would I never be able to 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 act I like he did. Share I would be, share I would be like, I would be like, you know, fuck you, everybody. I'm gonna, I was I'm gonna kill mother, you all. I was telling my mother during his final speech, I was telling her like, please, please, let's see that he will say fuck off to somebody. I really <laughs> wish that he would say fuck off to somebody. No, I, then, I see that. No, he's such a class act. Like literally. Yeah, yeah, I think that you you say you shared the clip celebrating. Um, oh. Yeah, on Twitter, I remember. Uh, yeah. It was really yeah. nice. It was Thank really you. nice. I was dying in that final, to be honest. I was so praying for him to get what he wants. Yeah, me too. Uh, by the way, my personal favorite of his is his first Grand Slam. Australian Open 2008. Mm, yeah, not know. only because, yeah, not only because, I mean, first of all, I have affinities for firsts, but it was basically the day I started following tennis, honestly. Because you know, before that, sure, I, I, I mean, I used to watch a couple of his matches, but it, it wasn't it. When when he won, when the press conference was done, I literally picked up a racket, you know, and and went outside to to play with my sister, and for the next couple of weeks. You know, the entire neighborhood, all the kids, all, all you know, uh, we only played tennis. You know, no football, no basketball, which was usually the, you know, the two things that we played the most. So, and that was the first time I ever uh, uh, imagined of writing a, you know, tennis book or a tennis magazine or, or, or something like that which still didn't happen. <laughs> Hopefully it will in the future, but at least we, we have this for now. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I wanted to uh, ask you about, and especially, you know, you, Mario, because you are our tennis expert and you love women's tennis, but I also want to hear uh, Andrea's perspective about, about the Simona Halep situation. You know, what... Uh, what happened over there, you know, how, why, can you first of all explain it to me, but also to, to you know, the people who will be watching this. And also to Andrea. And also to Andrea. Okay, Maria, you explain us and then Andrea will going to give, you know, her take and you as well. I'm going to listen. Yeah, okay. Uh, as, I, as I said on, on Twitter before, uh, I want people to don't, you know, uh, I know that the... Um, even if I know a lot about tennis and I think I I can call myself quite expert about the game, uh, you know, my opinion is still has to be verified from, you know, some real doping experts, uh, experts of these doping cases, because, um, but I, I read the, the, you know, the report, though it was 126 pages. And I, I read that really, really well because I also have to, I say publicly with, with no issues that I, I really have, you know, been invested in, in Simona's tennis and, and game uh, throughout the years. So I, I followed closely the situation um, 
Um, well, I have to say that the you know ITIA um, report is really fully detailed, and they they have a strong case. I I have to say that my opinion is that they have a strong case. Uh, of course, I, you know, there's a part of me which is still, um, you know, which still um, refuses the idea that she she intentionally doped and all this stuff. Uh, but I have to say that, in my opinion, the rapper is really, really strong. Um, that, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm turning all against her because uh, there are a lot of questions that has to be also answered because she she has a team around herself and also made by important people and coaches. And, uh, and so there are, in my opinion, a lot of things that has still to be, to be answered uh, to all of us which are following the process. I probably still think that, uh, you know, there are some things that probably went a little bit too harsh from the ITIA and probably the CIS tribunal can, um, you know, the defense can still prove something that uh, so far hasn't been, um, you know, gone out for, for, from, the, uh, from the process. Uh, but... I have to say that, in particular, uh, the second charge, um, the one of the bloody passport, um, it's quite strong, even if uh, at the same time, they, as I read, they haven't come to the 100% conclusion. It's, uh, they say, likely doping in, in the report. Um, and then there are also a lot of of questions to be asked because you know for example in the ordinary justice likely it's not enough to condemn your to condemn you uh while in you know in the sports justice it's enough because they try to keep it simpler and faster uh overall you know i think that the 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 allegation seems quite strong in my opinion uh, but you know, I'm the last one in this world uh, to to give a 100% judgment uh, without the opportunity from me to turn uh, to turn aside. So I'm still uh, trying to be 100% objective and to not say things which I can regret in the future. I just say that, in my opinion, the rapper is pretty strong, but. Um, I still think that there may be things that still have to 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 come out, uh, and so that's why I still would be a little bit careful talking about the whole situation, even because watching some some people like, for example, Darren Kale, mm, same same kind of thing, still make me you know a little bit doubtful about the situation. Uh, still, uh, you know, I still remark that the allegation seems pretty strong, but there are some elements here and there that uh, leave the door a little bit open, in my opinion. Yeah, but what are what are uh, what is, in your opinion, the worst case scenario, and what is the best case scenario? In my opinion, the best case scenario is that she may be able to prove that there have been some circumstances uh, which are not depending from her, uh, you know, her will, and she can have just two years. And so basically came back in October 2024. Um, and I think that this is the best uh, possible scenario because, you know, um, Still positive, so um, less than two years is difficult to expect, in my opinion, because uh, even if it's a contamination, um, it's not enough, you know, to um, you know, the contamination is not enough to let you, um, you know, to free yourself from the allegation, it's enough to reduce it because you haven't done it intentionally, but you still. Uh, 
as I, you know, studied in the in the past days, you are still responsible for what uh, comes into into your own your own body. But of course, if it's not intentional, you can reduce the um, the ban uh, at at just two years, which one of them has already, you know, gone since she's suspending from since October twenty twenty two. Um, the worst, I think, that it's what has been improved, what it's been proven, and so it the worst scenario should be uh, the four year ban she has already received. Uh, and so the worst possible case is that the CAS will agree with the ITAA and don't feel the you know, don't feel to change the duration of the doping ban. But can they can they can they take away take away her trophies or can she be fined money wise? No, I don't think so. Uh, in total honesty, I don't think so. Um, but nevertheless, I I want to to tell this to all the people who are, for example, joking on Twitter. I've already seen, for example, oh, at that Maya Toronto champion. No, it's not like that. If they choose. I don't think so because I don't think it's uh, because they haven't proof the, the clear proof to to say that she was uh, she were she was doping since you know uh, a lot of time. So I don't think that they can steal her trophies. But even if they do, they cannot give simply the trophy to who she lost the final with. Uh, taking away the trophies for her, it's simply not give the trophy to anyone. Because then it's not it's not fair to give the trophy to who who lost the final with because she also played the semi final for example and lost that semi final yeah. to another girl who could have beaten uh, the finalist for example that's, that's true. in the next match so it's it's not as simple as people as people makes if they decided to do that it's simply you know taking away the trophy nothing more it's not that another girl earns that trophy. Um, but I think that it's not the case. I don't think it's the case. Yeah, Andrea, what's what's your take on it? And what's uh, what's uh, what were the, the reactions in Romania? And how the people and media perceive Simona? Well, everybody sh was shocked. Was shocked, obviously. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm trying so hard not to read the media since a long time ago. Since I play my my Fed Cup. Yeah, smart thing. Yes, so that's why I I was uh, listening to him very carefully because I didn't quite know everything about it. What I do know, and this is my answer, I know she's still in the trial, yeah. so she's technically uh, in the battle to to have the final result. So I'm waiting for the final result for sure. So I'm not I'm not powerful enough to have a judgment on this. Yeah, that that's that's probably the the, the smart thing to do. Uh, yeah, I love the answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, uh, yeah, I'm totally honest because you know a lot of uh, of player may have it simple that without even reading one of the 126 page of I, the record. I not read it. I'm honest. Yeah, no, exactly. And so uh, he, he, it's easy for a lot of, you know, people, they haven't <laughs> read anything about the situation and they still have an opinion to share. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the main issues of, you know, today's era. Everyone talks, even if they, even if they don't know. Uh, and that's a horrible thing. So I really appreciate that's a huge that. Problem, yes. you know, yeah, I really me too. appreciate that. Mario, do you have anything else to to ask to you know to to chime in? Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, to ask her that. I I don't think that it's an incredible memory because you know because of the result. But you played Iga Shiontek in an official match. Um, I just wanted, you know, uh, a comment about her, about what impressed you the most watching her on the court. Um, I don't want to talk about the result because it's not important. I just want to talk about what your perspective was about uh, the way 
she, you know, um, the way she uh, approached the game and the sport in itself, since she is one of the biggest stars of today's tennis. Well, what I can tell you about the result, it was that it was... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I knew that's why, that's why I didn't it want to. It was double bagel, but... <laughs> But it's okay, because I truly enjoyed that experience to have. But in the same time, I wasn't supposed to be there on court. You know, it just was a change of everything in the last minute. They told me to go, and I went like a, like a Christmas uh, pig on, uh, on the yeah. Christmas Eve day. You know, like when you have to go there to cut the pig. I was the pig and I was cut. <laughs> so that was there. Come on. But uh, to be honest with you, what what was happening that day was nice. The Polish people were also applauding me, even if they didn't have so much to applaud, but it was okay. Um, and um, her game style, um, it was quite complex. She was super fast. I felt like I couldn't uh, have the time to even breathe between shots. And um, I think it was also a, a manly tennis game. You know, a lot of spin. She knew the slices. Um, the, the, the kick serve was huge. I felt like I'm 174 in uh, height, so I'm not quite small. But I felt like even with my backhand, side where I'm the best I couldn't hit the ball where I wanted to hit you know because of the kick um so I was super glad for having that day but what came afterwards with the media and the, the bad comments from my country and uh, all the jokes because I got the double zero was I think a bit too much for me to right. handle yeah. because on, I was not the only one that lost to her <laughs> double zero so I don't know what was such a big deal but anyway, I did have my fun with the, that rookie speech. So I left there with a the good rookie speech and the chance to play against Iga. So it was okay by me, to be honest. And sorry, if I can, just another uh, another thing. As you know, as he say, I'm I enjoy also the the women's tennis and I follow it uh, quite closely. And we've spoken a little bit about Iga, but. You know, there is Sabalenka now, world number one, having a fantastic season, especially in the Grand Slam, but also, you know, some other Grand Slam champions, like, for example, Goff. What are you seeing, for example, the next future, next year? Who is the girl you think that uh, can take the lead in the, next in the next period, if there is one? I see Cocos being solid and... I felt like uh, she was solid for a long time. Uh, she deserved that. It wasn't just by mistake, as some other stuff happened. Oh my God, that sounded bad. But it's okay, you <laughs> understood. Um, but you know what? It was like, she was there, you know? She she did quarters, she did semifinals. Yeah. She was top 10 for, for a pretty long time. Even a, at a young age, you know? Like, for example, Emma Raducanu won a... Grand Slam and then yes so <laughs> and, I, I got that oh my god okay and Coco was there all the way you know so yeah. that's what I like about her and about Sabalenka I think that she's a nice presence to have on tour I believe mm -hmm. that uh, she's funny you know even when she's not trying to be funny she's funny uh, she's full of passion on court. I like the way she screams, the way she's like a, like a lioness. So that's what I appreciate about her. I like to see more heart out there, you know, and not in an annoying way because there are also players out there that are screaming like, I don't understand why, but they are making a lot of extra noise for nothing. But Sabalenka is a different breed, you know, I really like her. And uh, Coco's mentality is insane, you know. She also likes Kobe from what I've heard, mm -hmm. and uh, I also watched a bit of her interviews, and it was um, nice to see her in the final and win it, because I don't usually watch women's tennis, but I chose to watch her specifically, because I felt like she was also fit, also mature enough to win it, Yeah, and she did it, you know?
What's your? Uh, I wanted to ask you previously, but you know, kind of forgot <laughs> to do all the the you know the questions and our takes. Uh, what has been your favorite uh, uh, moment in your career so far? In my career. Yeah. What What stands out to you? Well, my my one of my favorite moments was um, I won. Uh, where did I won it? I won a match on the main draw in Yash on a WTA event. I got a wild card in my home country. Um, I I won it, and then there was after I I left the court. There was this a girl that was around seven years. She was also playing tennis, and she told me that when she wants to grow up, she wants to be just like me. And that's amazing I, to hear. I died completely, and. I can put her literally on my top two events ever. It, she was the first person ever to tell me this in front of my face. And I think that that was in super emotional for me. I don't know. Seems like a little thing, but it was amazing. No, I, I mean, I, I can only imagine how, how much that, does that mean to, to, to anybody, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the best moments. And also, obviously, when I won, I won a 25K in singles this year, um, where I beat a few good girls that were uh, top 300. And then in the final, I beat uh, a Romanian fellow, Bulgaru. Mm. So yeah, she's been quite well. That was a great match also because I got cramps at the end of the first set. So in the second set and the third set, I was walking like a zombie. And somehow I managed with a good tactic to win it. And I was super proud of myself because that week was super intense. And I played uh, three sets almost every day. Hmm. So I was quite good. And in Turkey, the same at the 60K when I did the semifinals. And also tie breaks, you know, a lot of tie breaks, a lot of three sets. And... You know those moments when you think you'll die, but you don't die? <laughs> those are nice. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, any any, any plans for the future? How will 2024 year look like for Andrea? First, I want to be healthy. This is what I'm focusing on right now. Healthy Amazing physically sure. and mentally. And then I'll see what I can do. So literally, I prefer to go with the flow and uh, just enjoy what life has to offer me in, uh, in the store, you know? Yeah, that, that's, that's great to hear, honestly. Yeah. And, of uh, course, I... and of course, to visit Belgrade, but that's another. Yeah, question. yeah well, we, we'll, we, we'll talk about that. We'll, 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 we'll yeah, arrange because, something. You know, I need to go to a partisan and Red Star match when that will happen, because then I need to decide if I'm a partisan girl or a Red Star girl, because I also have... Uh, fans that are partisan and Red Star, and I say I don't know because I never went. Uh, you know, to see with uh, my really? mind. I need to decide. I I, th I think that I think that I trump all of the you know vi virtual fans. So, yep. You, you'll be so you'll be you'll be supporting my team. <laughs> okay. okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Mario, do you, buddy? Do you have uh, anything else to ask Andrea or to yeah, tell her to, to wish her? Uh, yeah, last one. Um, I don't know if you if you feel about that, uh, uh, but if you if you just would like to, you know, what's your favorite tattoo and what does what does it mean to to yourself? And also, if you you have been a bit happy to see a girl which have uh, also uh, you know a bit of that style with tattoos and all these things like Von Drusova winning in Wimbledon and having some sponsors. Uh, and all this this thing since you know we we know about a little bit of the prejudice there is about that but uh yeah, because they it, think they, they think we belong in prison if we have tattoos <laughs> but uh, i'm telling you uh tattoos come from vikings you know long mm -hmm. way before and they weren't yeah. prisoners so that makes sense and from uh, other tribes in africa so I'm good. I'm for sure. I'm not. I don't belong in prison. But let me tell you this: um, I would be happy to see girls right on tour with tattoos if they want. But for me, it's super important to talk with people that have tattoos if they mean something to them. Because I also meet 
many people with tattoos that they, if I ask them what they did, it they say that oh because I like it, mm. and, and, okay. and I'm like okay and and that's, that's it, it. <laughs> yeah, and for me then I'm I'm looking at myself you know I have my grandparents that uh, died and I have them on my skin I have my mother I have my father. I have my grandmother, I have the same tattoo with my father, the wolf, he did it as well. Mm -hmm. I have a tattoo for my God. I have my favorite quotes. I have many languages, actually. I have also Italian on myself. Uh, yeah, I have Italian, I have Latin, English, French, and there's that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're missing one. And I'm looking at you. <laughs> yes, I know, but uh, for now I need. I we'll need do that. To... We'll do that in Belgrade. Next time. I next need, time. I need to learn first the Serbian language, and then I'll be more into it. Like because you know, I also have many Serbs that they don't know I don't speak Serbian, so they text me in Serbian. Come on, really? Wow. Yep. And I need to translate. And then I translate back and I send them back the message and I do all this effort to just to talk. <laughs> I mean, that, that's quite, quite honorable, honestly. Not a lot of people would do that. But I like them so much. They're so nice. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll definitely know about this when, when I publish this tomorrow. Uh, okay, guys, that would be it from me, from all of us. Uh, Andrea, I wanted to thank you, dear, once again. For you know, you jo for joining us today. Hopefully, you know we'll we'll be able to talk about you know your career next year. Uh, you'll definitely come to Belgrade, and we'll you know get a coffee and go for lunch or whatever. Sure. Uh, yeah, just I also, for me, I want to to thank you as well. It's been great for me to talk to talk to you, and I I really hope to to speak to you very very soon because. Uh, you are a really nice person, and I, yeah. I really felt 100%. well talking to you. Me too. It was really nice, and we had intelligent conversation, which I really like and appreciate. <laughs> thank and thank I you, dear. the people will like this, for sure. Yeah, Let yeah. me know how the feedbacks go. Yeah, me too. And yeah. I, I, think, I think Mario shared my sentiment. Okay, that would be yeah. it. A uh, message for our viewers who will be watching this tomorrow. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you already haven't. Follow us on social media. We are trying to hit 1000 subs and followers on you know all the platforms whether it's youtube uh, instagram twitter by the end of the year uh comment on this video like it all of those things you know help with the youtube algorithm and things like that we would really really appreciate it okay and once again also me also some hello special hello to pavi julie and christina because with, with them i talk the most from Nolefe. yeah <laughs> so Pavi, Julie, and Christina, you heard Andrea, you know, yeah. big, 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 big shout out to you guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. And that'll thank be it for, for all of us. We'll, we'll, I mean, you guys will see Mario, me and our special guest next week. So until, until then, uh, uh, subscribe, watch, like, whatever it takes. Uh, <laughs> see you thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Too. Bye.